All right, so I'm back in Photoshop and um, the, the selection tools that we used in part one, you can actually use on photos as well, meaning that you can combine different parts of the photos. Um, I have my own scavenger hunt folder here. Um, I, don't ha I have some different photos than you guys did on yours, but some of them are the same. I have four photos that I've taken though of fireworks and I'm going to select those. Now there's two ways that you can open photos in Photoshop. You can do file and open and then navigate to that folder or if you already have the folder open the easy thing for you to do would be to select all four of them and you can select by clicking on the first one and then shift click on the last one and it selects everything in between. If you hold down the control key it can select something, I'm sorry, not the control key, the command key, it can select something that's not um, contiguous, not right next to each other, okay? Now, if you hold the control key and click, you can do open with and Adobe Photoshop. Don't just double click on them because that'll open it in preview, that's the default. Um, and that doesn't allow you to do any editing. You actually have to open it in Adobe Photoshop. And I know that as you guys get started with this, that's going to be one of your common things that you say, but I can't do anything. That's okay. It's because you just didn't open it in the right place. All right. Now, my fireworks three photo is actually the moon. Okay. And I kind of like this photo of the moon, but there's, I'd like to add some fireworks to it. Okay. So what I'm thinking I want to do is that I want to combine all these fireworks into one. And I'm going to go ahead and keep this Fireworks 4 as the one that we paste into, okay? So I'm going to start here with Fireworks 3, and I'm going to use my Magic Wand tool. And remember I said that you have the tolerance. So if I have it set at 25 and click, um, it does a pretty good job of selecting all the black here. But if I move that up to 50, it gets in even tighter. So I'm going to leave that at 50 for now and then I'm going to do my select inverse and I'm going to copy. Remember copy and paste are under your edit menu. Okay. Um, then I'm going to go to this other photo and I'm going to paste it. Now remember that when it's on a different layer, okay, and I can double click to rename this layer now, um, I can use the move tool to move it around. Now I also have another tool under my edit menu called transform and transform has a keyboard shortcut here it is transform has different ones uh, or free transform it has different um, things that you can do with it um, you can do a command T will get you there if you hold down your shift key and drag from the corner, it will resize it and keep the width and the height in proportion of one another. But if you drag just one side, it drags it out of proportion. Okay, so make sure you always hold the shift key down. Now, if you move your mouse to a corner, notice how this double arrow goes different directions. That means that we can now rotate this. So I can rotate this sun, or sorry, my moon, so it's facing um, the fireworks better. And then to apply it, I simply double click. Then I can go to another fireworks one, and here I have the red. Now you might say, well, why don't I just click on the red? And this is why. <laughs> if you look, um, because they're small parts, it's hard just to click on it. Now, I just unchecked contiguous, which means that it's going to select more. And actually, on that one, it did do a pretty decent job. I'll go ahead and copy and see how that looks. And paste. And it pastes it on a different layer. Oops. Um, I don't see it pasting. Hang on. It said it pasted, but I don't see it. So let me try that again. I'm going to delete that layer and I'm going to go back to the other one. Command D to deselect. I'm going to do the black again because the black is a solid color. Now, notice how it's got a lot of in there that it's not getting. I'm going to up this to 75% and I'm going to click again. 
and notice now that it is a little bit more exact. So I'm going to do select inverse. That way it is getting just the red. I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste. And now I've got some red fireworks. And I'm going to leave those where they are because, um, or almost where they are. Maybe, maybe actually I can flip it. Let me do a Command Z. I'll go to Edit, Transform, and I can flip. I always forget which way I need to flip. Oh, I did it right that time. Flip horizontal. Now they're over on this side, so they're not interfering with the moon. Then I have one more, and this one I'll check and see about the white. Um, I'll try it and go back here and paste. And actually, that did a pretty good job, and I can move those. Whoops, it's, oh, it's because it has two layers selected. I only want that layer selected. There we go. And I can move those down. I can also Command T, hold the Shift key, and resize it so it fills an area better. So now I've got a full sky, including the moon, of fireworks. And this was all done with Magic Wand, the options, and then some of the transform tools. Now, not every tool um, is, or sorry, not every photo is going to be compatible with the magic wand tool. It can only work magic when there's solid colors such as this. So the next one we're going to do is, um, let me open the giraffe, and here we go. All right, so you can see if I click with the magic wand anywhere, it just selects all sorts of colors, okay? However, I could try the quick selection tool. And the quick selection tool, um, notice that there's a brush size up here. Now, because I've already done this once, I, I know kind of what's going to work and what's not. But what I'm going to do is I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. And where's my brush? I'm going to also increase my brush size a little bit. When I say brush size, anytime you have to work with a tool um, that you paint with, and, and basically what we're doing is we're painting a selection, you have a brush size. So I'm going to start over here, and notice as I drag that it's selecting the giraffe's body. Now it is missing parts of it, and that's okay. I'm going to keep going and allow Photoshop to catch up. And I'm going to click a few more parts. And then I'm going to go back up here where it missed its mane and come down its back. And then I'll finish. with the body right about here. Now, the reason I'm stopping using this uh, quick selection tool here is because I know that it's not going to work down on the legs. It's going to select the ground. And I'll show you. See how it's already selecting the ground? So I'm going to go use my um, history uh, panel and backtrack. So what I'm going to do here is this. I'm going to zoom in even more and let me collapse my panel so I can see and I'd move this better. So you can combine tools. So I use the quick selection on the body part but now maybe I want to use um, let's say the polygonal lasso tool and I'm going to add to selection. Okay. So now at this point I click to make my first anchor point, and basically every time there is a change in the outline of his body, I click. So if there's a straight line, I only have to click at the um, like the first and last point. So that's why the polygonal lasso tool is a little bit easier to use than the 
regular lasso tool. And I'm going to pause this as soon as I get back up here and finish off his legs. But notice how I have to go back to the beginning and then now that leg is selected. I'm going to hit pause now while I finish. Okay, now I have my selection made. And if I go back out to where you can see the whole thing, it's a pretty decent selection, but I can see a couple port parts here that did not get included. So I'm going to show you a little trick. Obviously you know that you can add to your selections using this, but we have what is called quick mask mode. See it down here at the very bottom? And if you edit in quick mask mode, it turns red. I'm going to zoom back in a little bit and start looking up here at the top. And I noticed that some of his horn and ear did not get selected up here. You see that? So what I'm going to do, let me, there we go. What I'm going to do is I need to get my paintbrush. And it's right here. And notice that the colors are black and white. Now, if I, whoops, if I hit this arrow, it toggles back and forth between white and black as the foreground color. White will add to the selection. Okay, so you can see some of that red disappearing around his face and around his mane here. And as I scroll down, I'll check. So there's more red here, and I can use the white to get rid of that. And I might want to increase my brush size a little bit. It'll make it easier for me to work. Okay, so I got to get rid of that red. And then it becomes part of the selection. Okay, now I'm going to scroll down even more. And I have a little bit more here and here. And so there's lots of ways for you to get a, make a really good selection. It does take time and patience using the tools in order to do this. Let me scroll over. Okay, now here I see a little bit of grass. So now if I flip over to black, notice that I paint red. That means it's subtracting from the selection. Okay, so that's what those two colors do, and you can perfect your selection. Now, you may ask, well, why do I need a selection? Let me exit quick mask mode. You can see your marching ants. Well, this might be why you want your selection. I'm going to go ahead and Command C. I'm going to do a File New. And I'm going to make it, whoops, I'm going to make it US paper, but opposite. So I'm going to do the um, 11 by 8 and a half again. There we go. And then I'm going to paste. Now, first thing I'll do is I'll hold transform using my command T and then hold my shift key while I drag from the corner. And now you see I have this giraffe in a completely different document. So maybe I wanted to make a collage of animals. Well, this would be one way for me to do it. Now, one thing that's nice is you can actually save this selection. So let's say um, you wanted to use a giraffe several times. You could come up here to Select, Save Selection, and then name it. So I could name this Giraffe Body and click OK. And now, as I Command D to deselect, instead of going through all of that to select again, I go up to Select, Load Selection, and guess what's here? Giraffe Body. And as long as I save that as a PSD file, it will be there for me.